Rob Benzers, welcome back to my channel and uh, in this video we're going to do something a little bit different. At this time of year what we would normally expect to be seeing is us as a family zooming off somewhere, we've normally got holidays booked, I'm normally zooming towards a track day and having lots of track day videos and at the same time we would normally be heading off to some kind of a theme park somewhere like Disneyland, Chessington, Legoland, those kind of places of which you'd normally be expecting videos to be up on this channel all about it. Unfortunately we are heading to that horrible time at the moment where unfortunately the coronavirus is spreading not only around the UK but around the entire world and we're doing the right and the sensible thing and we're staying at home. Now that actually includes something that quite a lot of us still are able to do and that is working from home. So this video is going to be exactly that. I'm going to guide you through how to work from home and to try and give you some hints and tips to try and assist you with working at home. So massive shout out to a couple of other content creators that have done videos very similar to this. Um, I am going to post the links for the videos I'm just talking about up here, so do go and check them out. Number, were, number one is uh, from Hannah Witten on her More Hannah channel, who's also done uh, a great video on working from home. And the second one is uh, Catherine Manning on the Content Bug, who has also done a great video as well. Again, come and check it out following this link up here. So my first tip for you for today is making sure that you have your day planned. So when you are planning your day, you don't want to do it on the day. You need to know exactly what you're doing before you start your day. So I always recommend that the night before, last thing you do before you finish your work for the day previous is make sure you know exactly what you're doing the following day. So getting up, you want to basically have not only a to-do list of the things that you want to get done for the day, you also want to try and plan when you're going to do those things throughout the day. And I'm a great believer in actually looking Outlook for emails and I use the calendar within Outlook. And what I tend to do is plan out things such as conference calls, times that I'm going to be ringing people, uh, also build in periods for breaks and lunch and as well as that also continue forward and do specific tasks that you need to get done plan those in throughout the day don't just wing it else you're going to find yourself in a situation where you don't really get anything done because you don't have a lot of structure you really end up struggling with procrastinating and not getting on with things another thing that i find really helpful and a great feature within outlook is you can set alarms for your next task. I always have mine set for 15 minutes before I need to start doing the task. So I know if I've got a conference call coming up, if I need to ring somebody, or if I need to finish the task I am doing and move on to the next one, then I've got 15 minutes to finish off what it is that I'm doing, and I know I'm gonna be moving on to the next thing. Now for me, it does work a little bit better as well. I kind of have my IT stuff that is hounding me around this. So what I tend to do is uh, have it so it pings up and alarms me actually while I'm on the laptop. Uh, but because my calendar and everything is actually synced to my iPhone, it also comes up on my iPhone as well. And I also have a Fitbit smartwatch. So it also pings up on that also. So should I be at a stage where I am doing well or perhaps I've given myself a quick little break, I've got to go and grab a coffee, even if I've walked away from the laptop I'm getting a ping on my wrist to basically say to me, oi, you've got 15 minutes, then you've got to make sure you're starting something. So I always know what it is that I'm doing, I can be focused on getting it done and basically I can uh, move on to my next task at the right times. So one little tip for you to remember is when you are going to go and get up and do some work, it is a really good idea to get dressed. Don't be slobbing around in uh, all your sloppy gear. It's worthwhile putting something half decent on. Getting that brain into the fact that you're up, you're out of your pyjamas and that you're actually wearing something and you're here to do a bit of work. Doesn't mean that you need to be wearing a full on suit, but just something comfortable, jeans, jumper, shirt, something like that, just get your brain in the gear that I'm up and at it. Okay, so my second hot tip for you is uh, basically where you're gonna work. 
Um, we sit in this room now and uh, this is my spare bedroom. Um, I'm not going to show you around the rest of the room because most of the rest of the room is actually a right mess. But what I do have is I have a workspace. I have a very small area for me to sit. It probably doesn't give me the most amount of room, probably not the most comfortable seating position. What I do have is I have a separate seat, I have a separate desk, I have somewhere to put my laptop, and basically I have a work area. It is away from the normal workspace. I'm not sitting here and trying to do work in bed. That is a really bad idea. But at the same time, what you don't want to do is be doing work in an area where you relax and enjoy yourself. So sitting down on the sofa, not a great idea because you're more likely to be at a stage where you can be focusing on whatever's on TV or a game you want to play. By having a separated area, it helps you to keep away from the family, to have that separate space and to focus on your work and then you can become a bit more detached but in the same vein what you can also do is then very quickly take yourself into the other space and go and have time with the family at the appropriate times. I've got for you is around managing working with home when you have family members and other people in the house with you. Obviously what you need to do is ensure that you've got some of your own space so that you're not hugely distracted and you're able to work from home. So main thing you need to do is kind of set your what stool doing, set your stool out <coughs> to make sure you don't get interrupted by people <laughs> and that they know that you're working. Dad, look I'm playing Super Mario Odyssey, I've got so much coins. This is what you do not want to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Megan. <laughs> so, one of the one of the important things to do is have chats with your family members. Let them know when you're going to be starting work, when you're going to be finishing work, finish when you when you're going to be breaking for lunch, and so that they absolutely know <laughs> not to interrupt you. <laughs> Go and tell mum. Deleted footage! <laughs> Deleted footage! Go away! Maybe just a bring little finger, Dion. Haha. The struggles you go to to get a bit of room, not get any grief from the family, I'm telling you. It's not an easy thing. Be gone! <laughs> and then have a lovely lady that comes and licks your cheek. <laughs> Um, I've got to say it's a bit of a mixed bag though when it comes to being distracted. So some people say that they're heavily distracted by their phones and they move the phones out of the way and they basically uh, move anything that's going to give them any distraction, any social media stuff. So for me when it comes to my phone, I actually have my phone with me and next to me all of the time. Um, I don't put it in another room, it is a really important work tool for me. Uh, what I do make sure that I do though is focus on the tasks that I really need to get done so that I'm not actually getting distracted by my phone. A simple tip can be if you do have a cover that covers the screen of your phone that's always helpful. Um, at the same vein I also tend to find that um, actually having your phone just literally turned upside down if you don't have that screen can also do the job for you. The thing that you don't really want to do is you don't want to get heavily distracted by a notification. Look at it and basically end up in a situation where you're in the middle of doing something, you stop what you're doing, you're starting to pick up your phone and look at your phone because you've got some kind of a notification. Unless the world is actually ending, it will wait an hour or 30 minutes or however long you've allocated yourself to complete the task that you're currently doing. So when it comes to making sure that you're managing your phone calls, you've really got two ways of trying to do this. One, you actually grab hold of your phone when it rings and you take the phone call and sometimes you just have to do that. Um, other times, if you know the person that's ringing or you might know what it's about, then you might actually not take the call and then give them a call back. Now I've got to be honest, um, sometimes I do do this, so it can be really helpful if I want to complete what I'm doing, I don't want to get distracted, I know I'm doing well, I've got my vibe going, then what I will do is let the phone ring out, let it go to answer phone, if it's really important someone will leave a message, I'll be honest if someone does leave a message then I will normally listen to it and if it is absolutely critical then I'll ring them back there and then, however if they don't leave a message then I'll be courteous to them, I'll finish what I'm doing and then give them a call back and we can have a conversation around whatever they're ringing me for. So I generally find that really really helpful. From a point of view of social media, 
got to say to you, you've just got to be strict and controlled. Um, and this brings us on to my next point. Really, next point is ensuring you're productive. Um, basically, trying to make sure you've got consistent productivity every single day. Uh, what we also want to do is make sure we're not procrastinating and uh, kind of links into what we were just talking about a moment ago, we're getting distracted. So, my really big tip with this one, and this is something that some of you may not be used to. When you're working at home, your goal is to complete the tasks that you need to get done. That's it. So the goal isn't to be there from 8.30 until 5.30 with an hour for lunch and, and you're doing your time. So when you go into an office, sometimes you get to a situation, let's go old school here, clock in, clock out, you could do the hours. When you are working from home, the important thing when you're working from home is to get the job done. How you get that job done and how quickly you get that job done is up to you. Generally, I bet you any time you like, your boss or your customers are gonna be interested in basically the output of what you have achieved. They're not gonna be interested in how long it took you to achieve it. So, here's the great thing about working at home and the reason why you shouldn't procrastinate and you should get jobs done. As we've talked about, get them scheduled so you know that you've got particular tasks that you need to get done for the day. Obviously make sure you're realistic with those tasks and don't set yourself three days worth of work in one day. Be sensible with what you're going to achieve and what is expected from you. Schedule time for how long that job is going to take and then get on with it and do it. Now if you schedule yourself an hour to go get that job done and you've done it in 45 minutes you're not in an office with other people around you, you are at home. So you now have 15 minutes of free time. Get up, you're done. You've, you've allocated time to that job. That's 15 minutes back for you, you're at home. You're gonna get your ping if you've set an alarm, watch, phone, whatever you're gonna to do to say, you now have 15 minutes, you've gotta start doing your next task in 15 minutes time. But that means you can get up, you can go and make a cup of coffee, you can go and fill up your drinks, you can go and make a cup of tea, you can go and grab whatever you want to go grab, you can have a chat to a family member, get 15 minutes back, go and have a mini break, you've just caught up some time, you've got a bit of flexibility, perfectly fine to do so. The key thing that you then need to do though is be strict with yourself and know that this is you catching up on time and what you can now do is come back 15 minutes later having had a 15 minute break and get on with it. Now that's the really great bit and it also helps to motivate you and stops you from being basically procrastinating around getting started on something because you know once you start and you get on with it and you do the job in a bit of peace without other people distracting you because you're doing it in your own workspace and your family know to leave you alone and you just spoke to them that you can basically crack on and get it done and get some time back for yourself and um, yeah perhaps enjoying a little bit more of a work-life balance than you normally would do in a normal working day. Okay, so my next tip for the day really, really relates to what we've just been talking about, and this is sitting at your desk. Some people really struggle with this, so if you are in that mindset and in that culture where you go into an office every day and you make sure that you're there and you're a good person and you are there at 8.30 and you're on the dot and you are there, computer is on and you're ready to go, that's fantastic but you're not going to the office, you're working from home. So if you've done everything, go, be gone. Finish what you need to do and finish work. What I would say to you about working from home is it is really, really critical. Again, it comes down to you need to achieve what you need to achieve for that day. Once you've achieved everything that you need to achieve for that day, you're finished, you're done. Go. 
Okay, next one that I've got for you is a little tip around eating habits when you're working from home and not continually raiding the fridge or raiding the chockey cupboard or whatever that may be. Um, basically what we want to try and do here is um, see if we can be sensible with our foods. Now a little tip that I've come up with since I've started working from home is listen to your body. And I've got to say, you do get in a very different routine. So when I used to go in and work in the office all of the time, first thing I used to do, dive out of bed, um, need to be up at a certain time, would need to make sure that I'm up and with it. So as well as my normal routine, getting up, having a shave, doing my hair, brushing my teeth, all of these things, um, I used to go grab a cup of tea and grab my breakfast. Now I've got to be honest, I'm the kind of person who doesn't really want food when I first get out of bed in the morning. Um, part of the thing that I started to realise as I work from home is it does actually change when you feel hungry. So my hot tip for you is listen to your body. Actually change your routine a little bit and it might really make you surprised. So I now realise when I'm working from home that I'll get up, I will drink, I make sure that I have teas and I have water around me. I don't normally have a cup of coffee until um, I've got to a stage where I've had something to eat. But I'm not starting to feel hungry, I'm not starting to feel like I want my breakfast, sometimes anywhere between half ten to half eleven. So some days I'm actually having my breakfast at half past eleven. Now it'll come as no great shock that if you're having your breakfast at half past eleven, then when it comes to lunchtime, actually what I'm finding is that I'm not hungry at all 12 one o'clock. So lunchtime starts becoming about three o'clock in the afternoon. Now I know from my own personal body clock and my own metabolism that actually mornings are very, very slow going for me. Uh, I know some of you out there are going to be real morning people, you're going to dive out of bed, you're going to be really inspired and you're going to get a huge amount done in the morning. For me, um, I'm more of an evening person and this goes with my food as well. So what I do tend to find, I'm not really eating anything in the morning, I don't need to eat anything in the morning, a late breakfast, I'm having a late lunch and then going into dinner which is a, pr a pretty fixed time normally, that normally tends to be at about 6 o'clock. What this does do though is it changes the volumes that you actually start eating. So I tend to find I've got a reasonably big breakfast, it's only a bowl of cereal but reasonably big. When it comes to lunch I've started to find that my lunch has reduced dramatically because I actually don't need that much, I just need to tide myself through to dinner and then a sensible size portion uh, for dinner to get me through until bedtime. So actually I find this is a great way from getting away from snacking. A little thing that I've actually found is if I have breakfast as I get out of bed in the morning, I'm desperate to go and have something else to eat, some kind of little snack, at around half eleven, about the same time as I'm having breakfast at the moment. Basically, breakfast didn't count in my body clock. I ate it, but it didn't notice it was there. My advice to you, listen to your body. Eat when you start to actually feel hungry, but try and keep to your three square meals a day just not necessarily at the same time as you used to when you're going into work. My next hot tip for you is looking at your personal energies. What the earth does that mean? Okay, so this is peaks, slumps, high points, low points, downtime, and I'm also going to drag into this one a bit of exercise as well, okay? So the key bit for you to understand is yourself and your body, and I'm sure actually you know this already. So take a bit of time over the next few days to realise when you're most productive and what kind of person you are. You probably know this. Are you a morning person? Are you an evening person? Do you dive out of bed with all of the energy in the morning or does it take a crowbar to get you out of bed in the morning? Are you, are you the person? Are you the person that is an evening person? Are you the one that comes to bed at one o'clock in the evening and you know you're super, super productive towards the end of the day and in the afternoon? Then you need to start recognizing this and also plan all of your diary accordingly. Plan your tasks accordingly. For me personally, I know I am useless in the morning. I really am not great. But 
what I am quite good at is actually engaging and talking to people. So at the moment while coronavirus is happening, I'm still working, I work for a parcel carrier and I'm at a stage where I am on multiple conference calls that start at eight o'clock in the morning. So I'm up and actually doing some work and being productive at eight o'clock in the morning. By the time that I've got through to about half nine, I've normally done multiple conference calls and actually achieved something, um, which has really helped. I haven't got anywhere near emails, I haven't got anywhere near tasks. Um, what I can then do is if I do want to make sure that I'm going to do some exercise for the day, look online as well as what have you got stashed away in your house and your garage. So for me, I've actually got a load of exercise equipment that is in my garage. That could do if I wanted to. As well as that, I mentioned my smartwatch, my Fitbit, and uh, that has mini workouts. We need 10 minutes a day. It's something to basically get the heart pumping, get you going. Um, I'm sure you know exactly what your workout is. Just because we can't go down to the gym and we can't venture out doesn't mean we can't do exercise, and it doesn't mean uh, that we have to do it before or after work. You're working from home, so build it into part of your day. And actually doing exercise in, in periods of time when you know you're not really going to do very well and that you're going to really struggle with your motivation to get tasks done is a great time to be doing exercise. From my point of view, what I then end up doing is if there's any really important stuff, something I really need to get my head into, something that I really need to read or understand or learn or create, that is always done in the afternoon. I always schedule time after lunch to make sure that I'm really driving into that when I know my energies are going to be a lot higher and I'm going to make a lot better job of it and I'm going to be a lot more switched on mentally. That may be the morning for you, only you know. But what I would say to you, do take that time to figure out what type of person you are, when you're most productive, when you get the most out of it, and that's when you schedule your tasks for. At the same time, don't be too upset around those lulls and those downtimes. When you've got those lulls and those downtimes, pick up the phone, speak to people, great time, a great thing to do when you haven't got that energy to really get in your work or go and do a bit of exercise. So my next hot tip for you is basically taking some breaks. You are working at home, so make the most of it. When you're having lunch, do have lunch, don't eat it at your desk, do actually take five minutes to stop, stand up, go somewhere else, pretty similar to when you're at work really. You don't really enjoy sitting down at your desk the entire time through lunch, so do make the most of it. Doesn't mean you need to take the entire hour. Um, Again, you're, you're managing your own time. The quicker you get things done, the quicker you get your work done, the quicker you can finish it. So if you want to take 15 minutes for lunch and then come back to it, so be it. But at the same time, make sure you are going throughout the day where you're getting drinks, you're getting up, you're going to have a chat with the family for five minutes and then coming back and carrying on working. Next thing, how to cope with a uh, lack of contact with your colleagues at work. Now I've got to say, this is another thing where you really need to get to know yourself um, very well. So generally you tend to find that people are either extrovert or introvert people. If you are an extrovert and you really, really need to be around people and you hate being by yourself, you are really, really going to be hating this at the moment. Um, if you're introvert, such as myself, then to be honest, it's great. I am actually at a stage where I've got peace and quiet, I can get work done, um, I don't need to burn all my energy by socialising around, around lots of people. But in the same vein, you do need to make sure that you're engaging with others. So uh, again, use the uh, things that are available and around us. You can do WebExes and conference calls with your work colleagues throughout the day so that you get an opportunity to interact with them. And at the same point, use all of the mobile technology that's available to us at the moment and internet for live streams, uh, great apps such as House Party, basic ones such as WhatsApp, uh, so that you can interact with others and you can communicate others not only by phone but also video conferencing or video calls as well to get the most out of in essence being distancing from them but still engaging with them. So I hope you found my tips and tricks uh, really helpful. I hope this is something that um, will assist you with planning your day and working at home. 
and uh, what I will do is make sure that I have in the links below a couple of videos for you so uh, again I'll reference both the one from uh, More Hannah on Hannah Winton's channel and also uh, the content bug so do go and check those out some other great tips that they are also giving uh, that you might find really really helpful in the same vein uh, if you have liked this video obviously do hit a like and subscribe button and if you would like any further hints, tips or tricks then by all means leave me a comment and I will do my best to either do any follow up videos if this has been helpful um, or answer it in your comments. Thank you Thanks once again for your time, looking forward to seeing you in the next video and let's hope we can beat this coronavirus and all get out in the sunshine before it turns to winter. Thanks a lot for watching, see you again soon. This video is brought to you using the GoPro Hero Black 5. If you'd like to have your own, please click on my affiliate link in the description below. Please be aware any purchases made will supply me with a small commission. I hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe before you go and see you again for another video very very soon.